In this presentation, we will take a look at and work an example problem related to trend analysis, a type of horizontal analysis where we're going to be comparing multiple periods, typically multiple years, and we're going to be comparing them to a base year. This is the data that we'll be using. We have the income statement up top. We have the balance sheet down below, and we've got multiple years, 2000X1 to 2000X7. Note that we have the most current year first, and that's going to be a common type of convention. It might be backwards. You might be thinking, hey, why don't we have the base year first and read left to right as we would a story starting from the beginning, going to the end of it. But again, most of the time, the analysis of financial statements are going to be a bit impatient and they want to have the most relevant information, typically the most current information first. And so we'll keep with that convention, typically have the latest year first. So 2000 uh, X7 first back to 2000 X1. And we're just going to be comparing this information, of course. So on the sales, cost of goods sold, gross profit, operating expenses, we've lined everything up so that we have the same numbers in the same line items for each of these years note that if you're doing this in practice of course you'll have if other accounts were added say there's multiple expense accounts in one year versus the other year well then you're going to have to adjust for that put a zero in the year that doesn't have any expense account and obviously the data in the in the account that does and basically line up the accounts here and make sure that all the years line up as we do this comparison in a side-by-side -side fashion once we have this information we can then do our analysis with it in a fairly quick fashion what we're going to do here is consider the first year as the base year and then we're going to consider everything else as it compares or going back to this base year that's going to be a little bit different than a typical year by year horizontal analysis where you might think of just two years at a time in other words if we just had 2000 x1 and 2000 x2 we would typically think of 2000 x1 as the base year compared to 2000 x2 and we would do a horizontal analysis however when we start going out to 2000 x3 and so in that case it would be pretty much the same under the the trend analysis and the standard hor the standard horizontal analysis if we go out to 2000 x3 however then we're comparing 2000 x3 number not to 2000 x2 but going back to the base year and what that does is it gives us a nice smooth trend all being based on the same base year when we consider the percentage changes so we'll consider the percentage changes not based on the prior year each time but based on the base year so when we start to construct our trend analysis what we want to see are percentage changes percentage changes based on the base year every year then going back to the uh seven the 2000 x1 or the 755 so if we were to consider this just for sales then let's do this for sales 755 over 755 the base year is always going to be one or a hundred percent then if we go to year two in our trend we're going to say the uh, 921 divided by the 755 there's a 1.21 uh, increase so it's going to be increased 1.21 or in other words uh, 2000 x2 is 1.21 or 22 percent of 2000 x1 and then if we go to year three we've got the 991 divided by the 755 and now we have a 2.31 increase and then we go to to year four and we're always the key is we're just always going back to 2000 x1 so 10362 divided by the 755 that's going to give us a 1.4 and then we go to 2000 x5 and we take the 1158 divided by the year 2000 x1 755 and then we got the 1.5 and so on so if we consider this in terms of the creation of our uh, income statement in this format we'd have the sales in a percentage basis so here's 2000 x1 base year 100 percent because it's going to be itself divided by itself 2000 x2 compared to the base year is an increase of 22 percent increase so we see the trend upwards in this case that's a good trend for us if we see 2000 x3 it's not being compared to 2000 x2 numbers 2000 x3 as compared to the base year 2000 x1 means there's a 131.3 increase and you could see by doing this we see a nice trend based on the same base year and so we see a trend upward based on the 2000 x1 base now you might ask well how do we choose the base year it's going to be an arbitrary type choice based on the information we choose but it's useful to us because it gives us that base of comparison all we're looking for 
is is a standing point is a is a flag is a comparison point for us to then see a trend based on so we need some static base period so that we can see the trend analysis in relation to it so obviously 2000x4 is compared to 2000x1 and we can see that nice trend upward as well 2000x5 2000x6 and 2000x7 we can also graph this information note if you see the graph down here for the sales we've got the blue line uh, for the sales so this is going to be our, our graph notice it's it's going backwards you that you might think you might consider the graph you'd like to read it from left to right but we created this graph uh, with this table that's in reverse format so in order to create the graph the other way we would have to reverse the table so in any case we see the trend then going from 2000 x1 and it's increasing in this in this format as we go to 2000 x7 and so that's going to be a good trend for the sales and then we just do the same thing all the way down same type of analysis so so for 2000 x2 obviously we have 556 divided by the 43 uh, the 443 for 2000 x2 that's 1.2 if we go all the way out to 2000 x7 we're gonna have the 1045 divided by the base year of the 443 that's gonna be the 2.39 if we go back to 2000 x6 850 over the 443 that's gonna be the 1.91 and we do that all the way through and again we're comparing to that same base year so if we go to the cost of goods sold then this is what we have the 100 always going to be on the base year of course 2000 x2 as compared to 2000 x1 we have the increase 125.5 2000 x3 as compared to 2000 x1 134.3 2000 x4 as compared to 2000 x1 144 and so on and we could see this type of increase we can of course do the same thing for the gross profit which would be the 408 in 2000 x7 over the gross profit of the 312 and that would be the 1.3 so we have the 1.3 here in the gross profit so there's going to be uh, the 130 percent on the gross profit we can also see this information on the graph so you'll note that the sales we looked at the sales line here but the cost of goods sold line is going to be this item it's going up at a faster rate than the sales line and then we have the gross profit line the gross profit line being the gray line here which is dipping down as a result of that the sales going up good the uh cost of goods sold going up at a higher rate bad <laughs> and therefore the gross profit is uh is starting to dip down here and we can do this uh, again for the operating expenses same type of analysis we're going to be comparing everything to the base year and then we have the net income once again comparing everything to the base year this giving us a nice type of trend that's what we're looking for we're looking for a trend we want to basically we want to make that trend be based on something that is solid some solid foundation and one that doesn't change and all we need to do is basically choose that foundation in essence arbitrarily so that we can then compare something to it and then see a trend based on that one point based on that point in time so then we're going to have the same information now looking at the balance sheet we can do the same type of analysis with the balance sheet and of course we're going to do the same type of calculations on the balance sheet side some type of horizontal type of analysis so we'll take the cash for example 2000 x2 176 divided by the base year 181 that's going to be the 0.96 and then we're going to do the same thing for the uh 2000 x3 178 divided by the base year 182 that's going to be the 0.97 and then we can keep continue on to 2000 x4 172 divided by 182 that's going to be the 0.94 and then we can go to 2000 x5 168 divided by 182 and that's going to be the 0.92 and, and again we're, we're basically comparing everything to 2000 x1 as we do this remember that when we look at the income statement we're looking for performance so we would think we would expect to see a nice trend upwards because it's performance we want that's what we would hope for that's what we want to happen because we want to be able to increase our performance as we go balance sheet we're thinking about a point in time so we're not necessarily thinking about there's going to be a constant increase in in say cash i wouldn't expect cash to just be increasing all the time that wouldn't make any sense that we don't want cash to increase all the time we, if we had too much cash we want to spend it in order to help us to generate revenue or we want to give it to the owners in terms of dividends uh, in some format so we wouldn't have the same type of expectations as we do this type of trend analysis but the trend analysis can give us perspective 
So remember, when we see the trend analysis with regard to the income statement, we're hoping to see a nice even upward kind of trend and we're looking for any kind of non even upward trend and trying to consider what happened in that in that region in that area when we look at the balance sheet we're not really looking for the same kind of kind of trends per se we're taking this on, on a, an account by account basis and trying to consider uh wh what significant changes are happening and then we can explain to ourselves well why are these are these changes happening if cash spikes up uh, at a certain point in time why is that the case? Do we shouldn't? Did we earn a lot of money, or did we take a loan out? And are we using that in the in the way that we should be using it? Those type of questions. So if we then consider the assets, then same comparison to the base year 2000 X2 actually lower than the base year 2000 X3, 2000 X4 lower than the base, and we can see the trend all once again compared to the base year, not compared to the prior year to it. Accounts receivable. Here's the base year. We're comparing everything to the base year. So there's an increase in accounts receivable. Note again, as we see this increase in accounts receivable, you might say, well, that's good. We got more people owe us more money over time, but it might not necessarily be the case. It might be the case that we're not collecting on our receivables as we should or something like that. So this trend, as we see it uh, increasing, the increase in the trend, even though it's an asset, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a good thing, but it is an indication for us that we can go into it and say, well, what, what is going on with this? Then we got the inventory 100% in 2000X1 increasing. And again, the fact that inventory is increasing isn't necessarily a good trend. I mean, are we holding on to more inventory? Are we buying inventory and then just holding on to it? Because we should be selling this stuff. It's going to get old after a while. So we don't want to spend all our time holding on to too much inventory. So note, even though it's an asset and you would think, well, it's going up, that's good. It's not necessarily good because the only reason we're having assets is, is to help us generate revenue. Otherwise, what, we shouldn't. We should sell the assets and give the money to the owners, right? In, in terms of dividends, and then we've got the other assets uh, comparing to the base year, and then we have the long-term invest. So we obviously see that they went down to zero at some point in time. So we sold the investments. We could say, okay, why did we sell? You know, what did we sell the investments for? Uh, did we use the money properly? Where did the money go? We've got the plant assets again, starting at the base year, everything being compared to the base year. We have an increase in the plant assets. That would mean that we purchased more plant assets. Possibly we sold the long-term investments maybe to buy more plant assets. That could be a good thing. Could be a bad thing. Are we using the plant assets effectively in order to help us to generate revenue? If we are good move, if not, possibly not. We've got the total assets here then. So we're summing, you know, we've got the total as compared to the base year. So total assets are increasing. Again, we could think of the total assets increasing. You say, well, that's good. We've got more assets. We want more stuff. We want more stuff. But once again, just remember that the goal of the company isn't just to own stuff. It's to generate revenue. Uh, if we have a lot of stuff that we're not using that we own, we should just give it to the owner so that they can they can spend it in terms of dividends uh, in some way. So the, as, the fact that the assets are going up is good, could be, could be considered good, but not necessarily uh, not necessarily totally good. The question is why it's going up and are we using the assets that we have efficiently? And then we have the liabilities and equity. So on the equity side, same thing. And the liability side here, current liabilities, we have an increase in current liabilities. So these are going up and you can consider that generally is not good. So why is there an increase in the current liabilities as compared to the base year? That seems to be going up steadily and possibly we're ramping up uh, more stuff maybe we got took out a loan possibly to pay for the property plants and equipment in order to generate revenue so that could be a good move could be could be bad we have to uh, but consider that information long-term liabilities also an increase so once again as compared to the base year we would say well looks like we took out a loan possibly in some case possibly to buy more property plant and equipment the common stock uh, is increasing so possibly we financed some uh, something with the sale of common stock paid in capital increase as we would expect with the increase in common stock and uh, the retained earnings we see the increase as compared to the base year in total liabilities and equity so you can see this is just going to be a common type of extension of of the horizontal type of analysis we're comparing one year compared to the other year and then we're saying why well, why don't we do a percentage comparison that would make sense and then you could then you can think how you would start saying well i want to compare over multiple years and see how we've done over the last five or 10 years or something like that. How can we do that in a horizontal type of analysis from a percentage basis? Well, let's pick a base year. We have to pick a base year and then compare everything to that base year. And that's how we would get to this. So, so these ratio analysis are really 
pretty intuitive if you start to think about them for a while. You can think of, just think about how you would create something if you were to make this from scratch. No one knows anything about it. You're saying, how am I going to start to think about how we're doing? Well, let's compare this year to last year. Well, let's do let's compare this number to that number. And now let's compare everything to a base year. And you can see how this stuff would be constructed and formatted just to try to get some more insight, some more another angle on it. Usually the tools to do that is some type of ratio, some type of fairly simple ratio.